Welcome back to Strictly. Over 23% of U.S. children lived in father-absent homes in 2014. Youths who never had a father in the household experienced the highest odds of incarceration. Joining us today to tell us how he beat the odds and is helping others do the same is Dr. Eddie Connor Jr., author of My Brother's Keeper. Thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Great Thank to you. have you back here, Eddie. Yes, Good indeed. to see you again. What was it like for you growing up without a father? You know, it was, a, it was really a tough transition and um, really trying to frame who you are, your masculinity, mm -hmm. and uh, just develop who you are as a man, mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a young boy and developing that, moving from boyhood to manhood, was a tough transition, especially me grappling with cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, stage four cancer, being diagnosed with that as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And to not have my father there was, was, was very tough. Mm -hmm. But I'm grateful for uh, my grandfather who instilled in me just the wisdom and the, the intellect and the ability to overcome those obstacles mm -hmm. and to really find the first three letters in cancer is can. Mm -hmm. You can't overcome, yeah, you can't survive. You so the last time you were here. Yes, yeah. indeed. In this book that you have, you talk about the six building blocks for <clears throat> boys to become men. What are the steps in this book and how did you come up with those? You know, much of my work, especially with this book, uh, My Brother's Keeper, uh, is forged uh, in my work with young males. Mm -hmm. I have a program, Boys to Books, Empowering mm -hmm. Young Men Through Literacy, Leadership, and Life Skill Development. Mm -hmm. And so what I've developed is looking at many of the intangibles that our young men need. One mm -hmm. is a book. Mm -hmm. I think they need to be able to read. If you, if you can't read, how do you, can you lead and succeed? Right. Right. So also a book, uh, a wallet, you need to understand the value of money, mm -hmm. um, investing in yourself. Also uh, watch. Time, you gotta know what time it is, and really time is greater than money. If you lose money, you can get it back. You lose time, it's gone forever. Yeah. Uh, I, I like to say our young men need a belt. You know, we always talk about uh, their sagging pants or eyesores. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes we got sagging communities, we got sagging homes, we got sagging uh, lifestyles, we got sagging grades. If we help those young men to pull up those sagging communities and things in our, around in our community, their pants won't be anything to pull right. up. Right, and do that, that. that look is indicative of, of a lot of other categories Absolutely. in life. Absolutely. What strategies can we use to help keep young boys out of prison? You know, I think we have to come from a, a specific area of, of asset-based narrative. Oftentimes we look at the um, archaic and um, negative uh, denigrating narrative, narrative mm -hmm. towards young men, low level income, mm -hmm. at risk. And I think if we provide them with the proper and tangibles. Tavis Smiley says young people like Kodak film, all they need is development and exposure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we develop and expose them with the right intangibles and tools to build their future, to build their life, I believe they won't go to prison, they'll go to Princeton. They won't go to jail, they'll go to Cornell and Yale. They won't do mm -hmm. four years in a correctional facility. Yeah. They'll do four years at a college or a university. Yeah, I like to hear that. Discuss the mission behind the mentor program that you just mentioned, the yes. uh, Boys to Books, please. Yes, with that being rooted in, in literacy, uh, life skills and leadership enrichment. Mm -hmm. It's really about letting our young men know that you are an asset. Mm -hmm. You have significance, you have value. There's a king inside of you. Mm -hmm. And this is how to really give life to that. Mm -hmm. And that is through education. That mm -hmm. is really you being a man of character. That is mm -hmm. you presenting yourself uh, in the right way so that you now, as Dr. George Frazier says, once you learn and earn, then you must return back to your community. Mm -hmm. So to be able to pick somebody else up and help them mm -hmm. and use your story as a vehicle to move your life to the yeah. next level. And speaking of community, yes. what can communities do to help mentor the youth? What, what can a whole community do to help mentor these, these boys or girls that you're talking about? Absolutely, I, I think one thing we have to change is uh, the lens in which we look at our young people. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at the picture, but we don't often times understand the frame. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think we have to develop relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so oftentimes we have this paranoia, we're afraid of each other. And mm -hmm. I think when we see each other as human beings outside of race, outside of ethnicity and background, mm -hmm. when we're able to have some really courageous conversations and now have an intergenerational transfer of not just wealth but wisdom mm -hmm. to being able to pass the baton on to the next generation, yeah. let them know how to build their future. Yeah. I think that's how you have something formidable. What is, what is the message real quickly that you want people to take away after reading this book? Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, really the message is Everything has a narrative, everything mm -hmm. has a story. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to share this powerful book, My Brother's Keeper, from the asset-based aspect. Mm -hmm. And that is, young men are not pariahs and predators, they're providers and protectors. They're not young thugs, they're young scholars. They're mm -hmm. not stereotypes, they're prototypes. Mm -hmm. This is how we begin to build mm -hmm. and forge something positive. Dr. King says, if we fail to live together as brothers, 
will perish together as fools. Okay. And so this is just the powerful aspect of it. Thank you for that. And one last question yes. for you. If there were a young man sitting here right now who just said, Dr. Connor, I, I, I just don't think I can beat the odds. I, I just can't do it. I, I don't have the strength or the people around me that I need. What would you say to him? You know, that same word that you said, can't. I would tell him the first three letters in can't is can. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole aspect. You have to think positive in a negative situation and how you're thinking dictates where you're going. Mm -hmm. Changing your mind and mm -hmm. you'll change your future. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Thank yeah. you. Thank Those you. are some real powerful messages that you share and, and I hope a lot of people are watching right now and will employ them. Thanks Appreciate for being that. here again. Thank you again. Dr. Connor. For more information, visit eddieconnor.com. Still ahead, we'll talk with family assistance for Renaissance men. Don't go away. Street Beat continues right after these messages.